Hey truck people and car people too. No discrimination here at Exotic Performance. Uh, even if you do sit strangely low to the ground and have no cargo or towing capacity, you're welcome here too. This one's for you. This is a Chevy LS, uh, GM LS, whatever you want to say. Uh, Gen 3, Gen 4, 4.8, 5.3, 5.7, 6.062, I believe uh, like 2002 through 2014. Uh, wide range of fitment on Exotics LS parts. Uh, today we're installing head studs. Uh, this engine has seen a lot of high RPMs and will continue to see a lot of high RPMs. Uh, there's even been talk of a supercharger. Once you start pushing boost, you start running, you know, aftermarket tuners, stuff like that. Uh, you got really increased cylinder head pressures. You're going to have increased cylinder head temperatures. Uh, this is an aluminum block, aluminum head. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that can move around in any given situation here. So we want to lock this head down tight. We're going to do that with exotic head studs. Let's take a look at them. This is a complete kit. It will do everything you need. Uh, comes with a little thank you pack. You've got a sticker, an air freshener, a uh, warranty registration card. You want to keep that. You want to use that in case you have trouble. Comes with real nice laminated instructions. Uh, take your time, read through these. Make sure you pick up all the little tips they give you. Uh, common mistakes. It's got your torque pattern and your torque specs. This kit, if you're familiar with LS, they do have an inner row bolt. Uh, this kit includes little baby studs for that as well. Really nice kit. So you got your baby studs and your baby nuts. Comes with the proper 12 point sockets. Makes life a lot easier. Insulation lubricant. Uh, our cylinder head studs, They're, these are all the same length. Nothing to watch out for there. You do have an independent washer and a flange nut. So, Okay guys, so before we install our studs, we want to take our time and make sure everything's clean and dry. You want to chase your holes. This is a thread chaser, comes from Exotic. It's usually right at the bottom of the page if you're looking at your stud kit. Um, you want to take your time. You want to make sure all your holes are clean and dry. Run this down by hand, by hand only. Do not use a power tool for this. Uh, this is a chaser, but it does have sharp edges. If you get carried away in there and do something weird, you're going to ruin your block. Don't want to do that. So take your time, make sure they're all clean and dry, blow them out with compressed air, clean your gasket surface. Uh, again, don't use power tools for this. Um, it leaves behind very fine debris that's hard to clean out, gets in your oil passages, next thing you know, you got issues. So just scrape it down by hand, use a razor blade, some scotch Bright. Get it to where it looks clean and feels smooth, no problem. Okay guys, so once you have all of your stud holes, not bolt holes, stud holes cleaned out and you got your gasket surfaces prepped and ready, um, a lot of people have a weird fascination. They want to install all their studs and then set the head. It's not a great idea. Um, this is a very fine thread on the top side. Um, the chances of you dropping that head down straight and square without gouging into the threads is highly unlikely. Um, best bet, set your cylinder head on. If I can find the dowel. Right there. Set your cylinder head on and then set your studs in place. Now you do want to use a little bit of lubricant. You don't need a lot here. These aren't going to move much. But all the studs are the same, except obviously for your small row up top. Again, just a little bit. Coarse thread goes in the block. Fine thread is up at the top of the head. So we'll get all of these spun in, 
and we'll come back and talk about torque. And we are continuing our stud installation. This is our last little baby stud that goes in. Just want to show you the guys this. These are freaking adorable. These can be easily confused as they are both a fine thread, but you'll see that the top side is a lot finer than the bottom side. And the bottom side has this little shoulder that bottoms out in the hole. So you just want to put a little dab of grease on it. Get her in the hole. You want to grease the side of the washer that's going to make contact with the head. And then you want to grease the bottom of the nut. Get that set in place. And this is the same process for big studs, little studs, uh, you name it. Put a little bit of grease on the block side, a little bit on the top side. Run them down by hand. A lot of people like to back them off a little bit at this point uh, with that little shoulder I showed you guys. I believe you just want to drop these down to the bottom of the hole. Uh, you don't want to torque them into the hole by any means. You just want them to bottom out. And then, same thing with your nuts. Just bottom them out. And we're ready for torque. Okay guys, we got all our studs in, all our washers and nuts are greased up, everything's snugged up. We've gone to our first step, which is 25 foot-pounds. You want to follow your pattern. It's pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just an alternating center out sequence. Um, we're on step two, 50 foot-pounds. One. Two. Three, four, then we'll go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just like that. This is step two, 50 foot pounds. Do it again, step three, same sequence, 70 foot pounds. Once you get all of those set, then you're gonna do your inner row to 30 foot pounds. Uh, not a lot to it. From this point, everything's just reassembly. Get out there, tear up the streets.